So this is the McLean that I will be putting the brushless DC motor on, doing a conversion. Um, the backstory with this guy is the original owner got it for $10 from Lowe's uh, sidewalk sale. Uh, he didn't use it much and gave it to me in 2014. I've been using it ever since. Um, it's been a good mower, but you know the engine's a pain in the ass to deal with. Uh, the gas tank has some rust in it, and in a matter of time, that rust builds up and clogs the straw, causes carburetor issues, <clears throat> and you can see down here the thing's leaking oil. So I've cleaned this carburetor countless number of times. I tried to find a plastic plastic gas tank, but they don't make them for this model anymore. They're discontinued. So long story short, I'm going to convert this to a brushless DC electric motor. All right, here's the finished product. We've got the 2000 watt brushless DC motor mounted on the McLean. And to the left of that is the motor controller. Um, that's the thing that performs the commutation and spins the motor. And what I got mounted up here is the battery. And I actually got the charger base mounted on there so that uh, you can just put the battery on like any other uh, battery powered tool. Got the wires relatively cleaned up finally. Um, there's a bunch of wires that come out of this controller. It's made for a scooter motor, so there's like brake signals and a whole bunch of other crap that I just tied off. I probably could just cut that off, but I didn't want any of the wires to inadvertently short each other. Um, as far as the battery, uh, it's just a uh, a Toro, uh, 135 watt hours, 60 volt, two and a half amp hours. I thought I was gonna need bigger batteries than this, but turns out that this battery only takes uh, about less than half a charge to mow my lawn. Um, I've got a takes about 20 minutes to mow my lawn, and that only takes about a, half the battery. Um, over here on the steering wheel control, I've got, uh, this turns it on, so you can see, um, it's about 60 volts. I can see this quite clearly, uh, with the video recording, it looks like it's appearing and disappearing, but that's just a artifact of the video, but it's definitely a solid 61.2 bolts right there. Um, still got the, uh, the typical drive shaft. So, you know, you can start spinning this thing up. And as you spin it, you know, the, the voltage drops a little bit. The blades are going there. Of course, you can drop the drive wheel. And shut it off. Um, there's another uh, switch down here. These, uh, a couple of switches... They didn't give enough wire. Uh, basically, this whole thing comes in a kit. You get the, you get the motor, you get the motor controller, and you get all these uh, uh, switches, throttle, everything, all in a kit. And uh, these uh, these kits are made for scooters, I guess, not lawnmowers. Um, so there's a uh, three-speed button here. One, two, three. Actually, keeping it in one is plenty fast for the lawnmower. And then this is a forward reverse switch. So I could switch that to reverse. And then, 
we'll see. You know, see, the, the lawnmower is in reverse, you know, you could actually prove it, right? It's going backwards. Uh, so, you know, that's super useful for backlapping. I used to have this kit on the side, I had a special chain, and I had a, a special bracket that's on there, and uh, sprockets that reverse the uh, the blade, and you gotta you gotta use a puller and get the sprockets. It was a major hassle, take like 30 minutes just to get the thing to spin backwards. Now it's just the flip of a switch, and this thing is ready to back lap. So that's a super convenient feature of this. Um, but uh, anyways, you know, these, these, uh, these two switches, they're not long enough to go all the way up to the, uh, uh, handlebars here, but you know, to be honest, I, I don't want to accidentally, you know, hit the, the reverse, uh, button when I'm lawn mowing and risk screwing the motor up. So I don't mind having these down here and I'm never going to change the one through three cause you know, I'm going three miles per hour here. So I just put these things, uh, just left them down here. I didn't try to extend the, the wires or anything. Um, you know, and I, I did the best I could with shrink wrapping and some zip ties to keep it relatively neat. Uh, anyways, those guys will stay down here. Uh, and then up here again, you have the throttle. Uh, and this thing here was spring loaded. Uh, so at first you'd push down and it would want to come right back up. Um, so I had to, I had to take the thing apart. First I took the spring out, but then it was just floppy, way too loose. So I put the spring back in, but just made it so that it's not recoiling. Um, it just provides friction. That way it stays, you know, wherever you set it, it'll stay right where you want it. Now this one over here is actually the cruise control button. <laughs> kind of weird, right? But um, you know, when you're mowing, you know, this thing's relatively sensitive. Um, so when you got it going like this, you want to turn the cruise control on. And then if you accidentally flip this thing, uh, it didn't work. You know, it's, <laughs> that was not a good example. Let me see. This thing's a little sensitive. Let me see if I could get it to work. There we go. See, now I turn the throttle off and uh, I think I think if you adjust it enough, it'll eventually turn it off. Uh, it'll eventually turn off. It's a little sensitive, but the idea is that once you lock in the speed that you want with the mower and you're satisfied with that speed, you hit the cruise control button and then you lock it in. And then if you accidentally, you know, hit this, you're not gonna go flying flying around the corner with a lawnmower. So it does work. It's it, I found it's a little flaky, but it does work. Um, now, as far as the battery, again, I, what I did is mount this uh, uh, battery on the charger itself. I had an extra one of these chargers. Uh, you know, I had to take, I took the charger apart to get to the, uh, you know, where these, where these clips are uh, back behind there. There's, uh, I got, uh, got a couple, I got a bolt, really tiny bolt and some screws to, to, uh, um, to fasten these these green wires you see here then come out of the end there and you know this is pretty thick um, you don't want to use uh, too thin a wire or you're going to be starving the motor of of, of uh, voltage because um, you know you're going to get a an IR drop as this thing's running basically the resistance of the of the wire looks like this is a 10 AWG um, basically just try to match the, uh, wiring thickness. I think this one's a little bit thicker actually than the one that comes on the motor controller. Um, anyways, I'll put the battery back on. So look, there we go. Um, no, just some pointers on the, on this, uh, motor mount, um, the, the holes right here, uh, this side and the opposite side, 
they just happened to align with this metal plate that is underneath the lawnmower, you know, where the, where the chain, um, so this metal plate right here, where the, you know, the little bracket for the, uh, I guess for the, the axle of the lawnmower, this thing is right smack dab in the middle of the way for, for these two holes is what I found out. Um, so I ended up having to drill a couple new holes here and here. Um, because you, you can't drill through that steel plate. And then uh, this area right here had to be cut out a little bit. Be careful. <laughs> you can see what I did to my thumb with the metal cutoff wheel. Um, but this, uh, this chain wasn't, uh, it was, it was, it was hitting, it was hitting when, when you're mowing the line, you could hear it tapping that. So I had to cut that out a little wider. Um, and then over here, uh, I have this, this vacuum, uh, you know, it's like a, uh, from a vacuum cleaner that you, that I wrap the, the cord up for the charger and it, it still will charge. I left the charger hooked up. Um, so, you know, I could plug this thing into the wall and charge the, uh, the mower without even, without even, uh, taking the battery off, you know, or I could stick it, I could take this off and stick it in the wall. I have another charger either way, but, uh, just to preserve that, uh, charger i didn't want to completely sacrifice it so i have that little cord there doesn't match it's kind of ugly but it it does the job um and then again this is a uh it's a 2000 watt uh motor um 60 volt uh dc brushless motor max rpm 4300 um to be honest this thing's probably overkill for this mower um i was looking at the original three and a half horsepower motor um the briggs and stratton that came with this thing and i think the max rpm on that guy was 3000 rpm and um and if you convert three and a half horsepower to watts i think it's like 2700 watts or something so i thought i thought this would be good enough but again this thing's super powerful super fast probably could have got away with a thousand watt um you know had i known um but i don't have any problems you know running this thing with the blades going with the the drive going i seen another video where somebody used a uh just a brushed dc motor and he mentioned uh that he wasn't even using the uh the drive wheel that he was just running it with just the uh just like this and then he's pushing it because uh as he said that it was killing his battery too much i don't i'm not having that problem at all with this um of course brushless dc motors motors are lower power uh they're more efficient than brushed uh dc motors you don't have the brushes the friction of the brushes um and also, you know, the way that uh, a brushless DC motor works, you got three phases here. And uh, see the green, the blue, and the yellow. And uh, I just, I just, uh, this came with plenty of cords. I just wrapped around here. To, I could have made it shorter. I, I just didn't, didn't want to hassle with it. Um, and if I ever reuse this motor in the future for like a go-kart or something who knows i might need a longer cable so i just left it kind of long it's wrapped around but it works it works fine uh, but yeah anyways back to the brushless dc motor this thing here is the motor controller and it will commutate these three phases um, and basically what it does it takes your 12 volt uh, sorry not 12 volt 60 volt uh takes your 60 volt DC voltage as an input into the motor controller and then out of the motor controller there's these three phases where it's um, 
it's either producing like a trapezoidal waveform or a sinusoidal waveform. The sinusoidal one, the sine drive controllers are, are more expensive, they're nicer. Um, but yeah, you can kind of think of it as a sine, a sine wave, three sine waves um, that uh, um, control the motor, um, basically going through the... Uh, the uh, what do they call it? The coils. Uh, there's three, three phases, three coils in this motor to to turn your um, your motor shaft. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, the the brushless DC, it's the way to go these days. Pretty much all the tools, everything you get nowadays is brushless. Um, the motor will last a lot longer. You don't have to worry about the brushes wearing out and things like that. Um, yeah, so pretty happy with how this thing turned out. Um, what I can do now is take it for a spin and let you see how it works. All right, we're going to give you a demonstration here. Cut the motor turn on. I also have this current probe here, so uh, you know, if I if I zero this out and I got it on the 40 amp DC setting, so I'm just going to put this on one of these wires here and turn the motor on. You see it's drawing about a little over an amp. Drawing a little over an amp. All right, now I'm going to set the current probe to the uh, max setting. Uh, see, that's min. There we go. Max. So, I'm going to try to run it through uh, the thickest patches I can find and see what kind of maximum current I can draw. Uh, probably should get that off of the ground there. Let's go. Just cut the line yesterday, so it's not too long. Uh, but I guess we did hit a spike of uh, over five amps. So um, you know, five amps at 60 volts. That's uh, about 300 watts. So about the power of three old-fashioned 100 watt light bulbs. Not bad. Uh, definitely nowhere near the the 2,000 watts the motor is rated at. All right.